In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make Synthwave in FL Studio using all stock plugins, all stock drums, and this is what we're gonna be making. What's up my producer friends, it's David with anothermonsterproductions.com. So when you hear the word synthwave, you probably think of this giant room filled with all these analog synths everywhere and it's just crazy. At least that's what I think of. I personally don't have any analog synths, at least not yet. Hopefully that'll change at some point, but you don't actually need analog gear to create synthwave. You can do it all with stock FL Studio plugins. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I would go about making synthwave. We're gonna talk about some stock drum samples you can use as well as some different synths and different synth sounds that are gonna be pretty standard to the genre. So in this tutorial, I am going to be using a lot of presets which I made in GMS. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to continue on with this series uh, so after this video, I'll put out a couple other videos where I actually dive into GMS and show you how I went about making some of these sounds. So if you're interested in learning about that, definitely check that out. If you're watching this video in the future, check the description of this video. I'll be sure to leave some links to those videos if you guys want to check that out. I'm also going to be leaving timestamps in the description of this video. So if you guys want to skip around for any reason, feel free to do that. Let's get straight into it. All right, so let's talk about the drums first. And one thing that I've noticed about Synthwave when it comes to the drums is that out of all electronic genres of music that I personally have experienced producing, I've noticed that Synthwave, the drums are like the least relevant part of the mix. So for example, like hip hop, dance music, that sort of thing, uh, the drums are sort of the focal point and the choice of samples that you use is very, very important. It kind of carries that track. So when it comes to Synthwave, I think the sample choices are also important, but it's almost like the drums are purposely less impactful. And so this is just something to kind of keep in mind. Plus you have this sort of retro sound. Uh, it's sort of a uh, movie score slash video game inspired from like the 80s. So this is the sound of Synthwave. So that's the drum sound that we want to be thinking of. And when it comes to actual drum samples within FL Studio, uh, what I've done is I've created this little Synthwave kit, which these are all stock FL Studio drum samples. And you guys can definitely find all these samples in FL Studio, but I'm also going to go ahead and zip these up. And then uh, I'll put a download link in the description for you. If you guys just want to download this pack just so you have it easily available to you. But basically, as far as hi-hats go, uh, I've taken some hi-hats from the classic 707 kit, 909 kit, and then some other random hi-hats in there as well. Kicks, we've got a 707 kick, which is right off the bat, just like a perfect sounding synthwave kick to me. So those are just some kicks that I chose. Uh, snare sound, 707 snare. Um, ooh, that, yeah, that one, that's more of a EDM snare. Actually, that one was not a stock FL Studio plugin, but that'll be included in the kit too. Toms, 707 toms. Like the 707 kit is just, it's really nice for Synthwave. 909. So we got our toms. Uh, and so, yeah, that's, I mean, that's the whole kit right there. So I'm going to be pulling samples from this kit as we make this track today. Okay, so normally I would actually start with something other than drums, but I think since we're already in the kit, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and lay down some drums here because I kind of have an idea of the sound that I wanna go for. Um, when it comes to tempo of the track, uh, it's generally, I mean, there is no right tempo for synthwave. It's not like house music or some of these other genres where you need sort of a specific range of tempos. Um, so I think synthwave can be anywhere from around 80 BPM to around 120 is the, I guess the sort of general area you'll find. Uh, and even up past 120 up to like 140 for more of the uh, driving like outrun type stuff. So I've got my tempo set to 95. This is where I'm gonna try starting out and we'll kind of see what happens from there. So I'm gonna use the 707 kick. Go ahead and load it in here. And basically for this track, uh, what I'm gonna do is just literally have this play on every bar like this. Uh, so now let's find a snare. So I'm going to layer these two snares on top of each other. I think this is going to sound really nice. Definitely sounds very 80s. And I'm going to root this to the mixer track. Let's add some reverb on it. 
Sounds like an awful lot of reverb right now, but once we get everything else on top of it, it's probably going to sound pretty good. All right, so I'm also going to go ahead and get a hi-hat going. And after the hi-hat, then we'll move on to some actual music. Man, I'm going with a lot of 707 stuff. I've got something in my head uh, where I want the hi-hat to kind of go along with like the, ba the bass line. All right, so that's a decent little loop that we got going on there. All right, so let's move on to synths. And when it comes to synths, there's one sound in particular, which I think is very iconic in Synthwave, and it's this sort of running bass sound. So I did create a preset, which is pretty much exactly what I want. I definitely want to incorporate this sound. Yeah, it's this one here. All right, pretty nice. Okay, I like that. It's a nice little simple bass line progression there. Okay, so let's go ahead and loop these drums here. So in order to make this bass work a little bit better with these drums, I am going to do some side chaining. And there are many different ways to side chain in FL Studio. I tend to do things a little bit unorthodox. And basically what I'll do, I'll basically just create an automation clip. Uh, I mean, technically this is just volume automation, but it's the same effect, so I still call it side chaining. But uh, basically, you can kind of go in here and can really hone in on the wave shape and d dip the bass out exactly when you want it. And then we just kind of do it every time the kick hits. <laughs> All right, I think this is a little bit too fast. Let's move this down to 90. So, I mean, that's a pretty heavy side chain right there, but I'm kind of liking that a little bit more. And feel free to experiment with that. Uh, obviously, do what side chain you like and sounds good to you. I'm going to try bringing this down an octave. So what are we on? D5. Let's go to D4. So one interesting thing about Synthwave is that there's really, like, not a whole lot of sub. Uh, obviously, this is sort of up to your discretion. So when in doubt, definitely check your spectrum analyzer. Anyway, I think that's a decent baseline. Let's move on to like a lead synth and see if we can come up with a melody. Once again, uh, go into my GMS and let's just take a listen to some of my presets that I have. I do really like that. Let's play with this sound. Okay, that melody sounded a lot better. I almost want this bass to be wide. See, right now I've got it pretty much centered. Uh, usually you don't want to don't want to make the bass too wide, but I don't know. I just I don't even care. I feel like it needs it. All right, so we're definitely gonna need some pads and some other elements. These drums right now are sounding very weak, and I think it's time to just sort of add some elements to kind of spice it up. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to add some white noise. And again, I've got some in my GMS pack, which I'm working on. Uh, we got effects, and let's do sweep down effect. Um, this is actually, I've made a tutorial on this pretty recently. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description of this video if you guys want to check that out. Probably put one on the screen right now as well. So, but basically these are like ready to go sweeps. They're like not just white noise. 
I think this is gonna add a lot. So I also wanna add some crashes and I don't know if I included any crashes in this kit. Uh, so I'm just gonna go to my monster samples volume one. This is another free drum kit I'm giving away for free. I'm sure a lot of you already probably have it, but we got tons and tons of samples in here. Uh, let me go to crash, crash three. All right, that sounds a little bit better. We'll deal with all the like fine tuning and mixing in a little bit. So honestly, I'd like this lead to have just a little bit more reverb. All right, so let's keep going with adding more drums. I think I wanna try and add another hi-hat. Bring it in here. Um, it could be like on every one. Yeah, why not? All right, so one thing that we're definitely missing is toms. Toms are a huge part. So the 707 toms work really great. And I'll just bring them into my piano roll. I could even try layering them. Well, at least we have some toms in here now. We can tweak these later. All right, so we're definitely coming along here. Yeah, let's just go ahead and take a listen to what we got so far. All right, so I found this preset uh, in Flex. Um, by the way, Flex is a, the new synth that just came out with FL Studio. If you don't have it, it does have some really great synthwave sounds in it. And they just released a new synthwave pack, so I'm kind of experimenting with some of the sounds here. I found this uh, sound called Ensemble Strings, which I went ahead and layered with the lead synth, and now it just sounds a little bit fatter. And now I'm in here just kind of experimenting. I found this sound called Eternal. I think it sounds pretty cool. Anyway, I'm gonna see if we can come up with some sort of arpeggio here. Hmm, I don't know why Flex Flex seems to really have an issue with CPU. If you guys ever have an issue with CPU, just go to time-based PPQ in your project settings, set it to 24, and hopefully that'll free up a little bit of CPU for us. I'm kind of bummed out about that. I do like this sound. Let's just go ahead and quick render it as audio. And uh, go in here. So I'm not really sure what's going on with Flex. It seems that some of the patches seem to take up a lot more CPU than uh, most other stock FL Studio synths. Don't know if that's something that's unique to me or not, but uh, I guess let me know in the comments down below what your, what your experiences are with Flex so far and what you think about it. Anyway, I'm liking the sound of this arpeggio. <laughs> The last thing that we absolutely need is some sort of pad. Uh, so I'm gonna go back into my GMS over here. I know I have a, at least one good pad so far. 80s heaven. Yeah, that sounds nice. Let's add this. So I added a lot of frequency pitch bending here. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a listen to what we have so far. All 
All right, so I just had an idea, which I think will be kind of cool. Uh, I want to do like another art type thing, but with like a lot of delay on it. So let's go into my presets. And I remember this one, this might be perfect. Fruity delay three, let's hear this. Go ahead. And Go ahead and do some ping pong. Yeah, I'm feeling that. Yeah, I think I like that. I like that. All right, so this tutorial is starting to get kind of long and I really don't want to make this any longer than it needs to be. Uh, so normally what I would do is just experiment, add little random things here and there, add some percussion, uh, just get in here. I mean, really, really we need a lot of work with the arrangement as well. Um, so when it comes to the arrangement side of things, if you're having issues with that, I would recommend just using a reference track. Uh, so find a track that you really like a lot and basically just copy the structure of the song based on kind of what they're doing. Uh, so obviously you don't have to copy it exactly, but you can kind of use their structure or their arrangement to help you decide what you want to do. And you can even potentially use like, you know, segments of where they bring this element out or add this specific element and just, you know, really pay attention to all the details and that'll help you out a lot when it comes to the arrangement side of things and really just anything in production in general. So that's about it. I'm gonna fast forward to where I finished this track and kind of done a little bit of arrangement and then we'll take a listen to the final product. Mm -hmm. 